Okay, so I think it's worth uh, acknowledging from the outset that th the reason I'm here is, is your fault. The reason you are in Seattle? Correct. That's very true. I think, uh, I think that I was a good catalyst over uh, shots and beers. Correct. Um, okay, so to back up, you're uh, my best friend and we're out for beers um, around Christmas time. Yeah. At which point uh, you said that I should, I don't remember exactly how you phrased it. How did you phrase it? Uh, that if you something like if you were going to do something, you needed to go do it and not have a backup plan, I think. Like, why in that moment did you, like, try to push me? So I think this was the most uncomfortable I'd seen you so far, and you're not really an uncomfortable person, so that was, uh, difficult to see. It's like, um, you weren't really thriving in that environment, and I think the biggest problem with that is you have a lot to offer, and I know that there are environments that are really toxic for me, and it seemed like in that moment you really just needed to be shoved in one direction instead of having like passive general answers like, yeah, that sounds cool, like you should totally do that. Why spend your life feeling like you're not in the right place? Go somewhere new and unknown because you have way more power than you realize to shape your life. All right, so here's the thing. I don't really even have all that much stuff that uh, I'm gonna take with me. Before I moved to Honduras, I got rid of most everything that I had, so I got like a handful of books left. I've got a shelf. Um, I've got a chair that won't even fit in my car, so I'm not bringing that. And I've got my coffee table that I made. Beyond that, just clothes and a handful of random other crap. So everything should fit in the car, and I'm gonna throw my bike on the very back. All right, I made it. It is, let's see what time it is. Six, 17. Not too bad, I was kind of hoping to be in the car by six, but you know, moving a little slow this morning. You don't need a whole lot of sleep to drive long ways, do you? Probably not. All right, we are thoroughly in a no service zone and Google is angry. Without a doubt, who I was and how I viewed the world changed while I was in Honduras. Those experiences too strong, the kids too much of a contrast to make life as I lived it before in Dallas a possibility. And that sucks, right? To realize that you don't really fit in. Because I don't know if we will make it through this one. Alright, so there are a number of things in Texas that are rather stupendously repetitive. Um, but there are a couple of really just fun, unique, and quirky things out there in Texas. And one of them is an art project called Cadillac Ranch. 
It's here just outside of Amarillo, Texas, and it is a series of old Cadillacs that were installed in the 70s uh, in the dirt, and then people were uh, encouraged to come out and um, graffiti them and kind of make them their own. If I mentioned that I was thinking of moving to Seattle, it would often be met in Dallas with an unsettled shock. But it's so liberal up there. And it was that idea more than anything, precisely that there were teens with such strictly divisible lines that bothered me and pushed me away. Like maybe it was okay that I move up there, as long as I acknowledge I wouldn't fit in. As long as I wouldn't agree with anything. As long as I was an outsider. That subtle and consistent insistence that to disagree is to prove you're not one of us is what made me know Adam was right when he said it was time to leave. Alright, it is morning in Amarillo. I just grabbed breakfast at Ye Old Pancake Station. I actually got waffles. Um, it's a fun little diner. Kind of place where it's basically one giant conversation in there. A lot of overalls. Uh, lady taking care of me, my server was, you know, filling up my coffee every time I took a sip. Not too bad. Now, last night, I stayed here in Amarillo um, couch surfing with a uh, guy. Now, if you don't know what uh, couch surfing is, it's where you can basically stay with somebody for free. And they've got a couch, they've got a bed. This guy had a whole spare bedroom for me. And the idea is that um, you get to stay there for free, and usually they kind of show you around a little bit and stuff like that. I had a really nice guy. Um, who ended up being a local physician uh, at the, the local hospital. Um, kind of a shy, fun, quirky guy. Um, he showed up, answered the door, I arrived at like 7, he answers the door in a blazer and a bow tie. Um, and uh, he's like swishing a, a glass of whiskey, um, which turned out just to be water, but he like gave me a tour of the house, just kind of like walking around, the, twirling the, this glass of water like it was whiskey. When I made a comment saying like, wow, you were dressed really nice uh, today. Um, you know, normally when you make a comment like that, people usually kind of give it a little chuckle and then an explanation like, oh yeah, I was at a fundraiser, or yeah, you know, I had a, a whatever people dress up for. Um, regardless, uh, I said, hey, you look really nice today. Uh, and he just goes, thank you. I'm in Colorado Springs, Colorado, just outside Denver, and it uh, means that I've reached a point in the journey where everyone is just so stinking like granola and, and sporty. You can just like feel it in the air, it's awesome. Um, I like, I feel, I feel like a loser for not having a sport rack on my car right now. Um, I've just got this thing that I've 
lumped on the back of my uh, my car to carry my, my bike. Um, but it's not permanent. It's not like a part of who I am. Anyways, gonna go try and find some cool stuff to do for the afternoon. All right, yeah, maybe the Texan forgot that the first of March in the mountains is technically still winter and there will be snow on the ground. And that tennis shoes are not the perfect fit. Doesn't matter, I'm having a great time. Back down to the parking lot. A little winded, that last mile or so I kind of went non-stop without any camera working. Feeling that a little more. <laughs> Definitely feeling the altitude. But man, just like the smell of pine needles in the air is just putting me in such a good mood. Okay, so this is Brooke. Uh, we were in Honduras together. She is an all-around badass and great person. And we're gonna be hanging out for the next two nights at least. Yes, sir. Day four in Denver. I am uh, about to leave Brooks Place now and start heading towards Missoula, Montana, where I'll spend the night. here I uh, seem to have miscalculated a little bit and um, 
all of a sudden my uh, gas gauge level kind of plummeted really quickly, almost disconcertingly quickly. We'll deal with that later. Um, and all of a sudden I was running out of gas very, very quickly. Um, and I like really slowed down and uh, finally saw that there was a um, gas station about five miles away. By that point, my car was telling me I could make it about three miles more. It's currently telling me that I've got zero miles left. Um, so I've been kind of cruising down this back country town where supposedly trying to get to this gas station that I'm about to pull up at using almost exclusively the battery. Um, I don't think I've used any gas because I've been going pretty much under 20 miles per hour the entire time. But I see the gas station and I think we're gonna make it. I was worried I was gonna be hitchhiking here for a little bit. morning. It is a brisk 6 a.m. here in Butte, Montana. Um, I was gonna couch surf last night in Missoula, Montana, but when I made it over the Continental Divide in a bit of a snowstorm, uh, stopped and got some gas. I was a little worried about that. Even though I had a half a tank, I went ahead and stopped. Uh, lady at the counter said that uh, Missoula was still three hours away at that point. It was 7, which meant they'd be arriving at the place at like 10 p.m. in a snowstorm. So I just pulled over and got a uh, motel and um, got a nice night's sleep. Idaho, what the hell? You are stunningly gorgeous. Um, been driving through uh, the panhandle of Idaho now for, you know, maybe like half an hour. Gorgeous mountain passes. And then stumble upon this lake, which is like straight out of Switzerland. Um, and it is so charming. Who knew? Um, Idaho, I have no doubt that wherever you keep your potatoes is like decidedly less interesting. Um, but cheers for having like the best panhandle in America that I've ever seen. Um, this area is stunning. As I came up over that last mountain range and the rain washed away the slush and dirt off my car, I couldn't help but feel that something was changing. It would be a mistake to say a move creates a new me, but it is a better me, a chance to start over, or content at least to try. 